Then uh, tell us a bit about uh, how you got word yesterday that there were some uh, fishermen missing. Well, actually, yesterday we came down to uh, check our boat, and as soon as we arrived here, the news was on the wharf that there was a boat missing from the base, and then uh, immediately everyone got ready and went out. There were several vessels that left and went, out, went and helped with search and rescue. So that was what time yesterday? That was 4 o'clock yesterday we left, so it was around 3.30 we found out. And you searched for how long? We searched till 1.30 uh, last night, or 1.30 this morning, you can say. We got back in. What were the sea conditions like at the time? Uh, the wind was still a little bit choppy yesterday evening, but as dark came on, the wind dropped off pretty good, you know, coming on, on dark. As, and then this morning it was really good, like the, the conditions were ideal today for searching, for looking around. I know, Glenn, from having chatted with you that uh, you in fact found two of the men. Can you tell us a bit about how you were able to spot them? Uh, well, actually, uh, when we were out the last time in our, in our boat, we knew where they were fishing to. So we headed in that direction when we got out there, and uh, with the way the wind was and the tide, we kind of went off in that direction, and we weren't very long, and we spotted a life jacket in the water. And as we got up close to the life jacket, we could see that there was someone in it. So that was the first person you recovered, and, and then a second? Yes, and uh, that was around 5 o'clock-ish. And uh, just before dark last night, I'd say about three quarters of an hour before dark, we spotted a second person to the solder, up almost up towards Pity Harbor. Glenn, how long have you been fishing? 35 years. Have you ever taken part in a search like that before? We, oh yes, we've taken part in a search like that. Uh, a year back, going back 15 years ago, we were at Scallops on the Grand Banks and there was one of the vessels then lost a man overboard and we spent two days looking, basically the same thing. How are you and your crew doing today? Uh, we're pretty good. We're holding up pretty good. You know, it's, uh, it, it's, it's not something you want to, to experience. Uh, people we know them all our lives they're from my community I live in the same community as them so uh, you know it's, it's pretty hard to deal with. Yeah, I can't imagine uh, what goes through your mind when you're out there trying to help uh, looking for these people obviously you, you hope that you would find them alive. Well you know it's not it's not what you want to be doing but you know that the people that you're doing it for want you to you know to do it so we uh, you know, it was a little bit airy coming across someone in the water, but at the end of the day, is is a far better result to have them than, than not knowing what happened. Have you had a chance to talk to any of the family, and what kind of message did you deliver to them? Yeah, I was speaking to the family actually uh, a few minutes ago, and uh, like I told them, it was a real good job being done out there today. Between the Coast Guard and the fishermen that are involved, there's a, I got to say, there's a real good job getting done of covering the whole area. Think happened, Glenn, in this situation? Oh, I really don't know. Uh, I'm just hoping that all of them had life jackets on and that we'll get the opportunity over in the next couple of days to find the other two. I'm uh, just curious about uh, the family. They must have been so appreciative uh, of your efforts. Oh, well, you know, the, we've, we were getting word out there that the, the basin was starting to fill up with family members and people close to the family. And, you know, anyone that helps out in a time like this is really appreciated by the family.